other names fade away let all the other names fade away until there's only you let all the other names fade away jesus take your place jesus take your Take your 
so excited that you are here with us on this morning. We are just ecstatic about the fact that we can lift up the name of Jesus. We can lift him up high. We can lift him up high. Our God is an awesome, awesome God. And we are super, super excited that he has given us this name that we can call upon. So right where you are right now, I just want you to take a minute and I want you to just lift up your voice and open up your mouth and uh, put your hands together, throw your hands up and just give God some praise right there in your house where you are, right where you are in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you may be at this moment. Just take a minute to give God some praise for just how good he has been to us. He's been so wonderful and so kind in spite of everything that's going on around us, in spite of everything that we see that's happening. God is still good. God is still worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be exalted. And there is no God like our God. And so I want you to just take a minute right where you are to just give God some praise. Just begin to bless his name. Just tell him how awesome he is to you, how much you can't live without him, how much you're nothing without him, that you can't do this without him, that in him you live and move and have your being. And that we are so excited that he has called us his people. So I just want you to just give God some praise right there where you are. Just open up your mouth, give God some praise, tell everybody else, just leave me alone for a minute. I need to be alone with the Lord right now. I want to praise him. I want to thank him for his goodness towards us. I want to praise him for how much he has done for me. If he never does anything else, he has done more than enough. And that makes him worthy to be praised. He is so mighty and so powerful. He is our mighty battle axe. He is the defense our deliverer. He is our way maker and our keeper. And I'm just so excited to be able to serve the true and living God. We could be somewhere
somewhere else doing so many other things. We could be serving another God, but for some reason, he chose to call us out of darkness into this marvelous light. So I want you to just praise the name of the Lord. I want you to give God glory and give God honor for who he is to you on today, for all of the many blessings that he has bestowed upon you, everything that he's done. You're in your right mind. You have good health. Oh, come on, come on. Nobody is wheeling you around in a wheelchair. And if they are, we still thank God that he's allowing you to still get where you need to be. So we are super excited about that. Super excited that we have life and health and strength and the use and activity of our limbs. We have eyes that can see, ears that can hear. We have a heart that can perceive who our God is. That is something to be excited about. We're not living in error. We're not living in some place where we're thinking that there's another God, where we're deceived by any satanic powers. We are so glad right now that we know who our God is, that we're able to serve him or we're able to love him, that we're able to hear from him, that he talks to us. Come on, he walks with us. He calls us his own. That is something to be excited about, church. That is something to give God praise for because we could have been serving another God. We could be doing so many other things right now, but we find ourselves with a mind to want to serve him. So we give God praise today. We thank him for another Sunday. We thank him for another opportunity to come before his presence, that even if we're not in the building, we can still be in his presence. So we give God praise on today. We exalt him above every other circumstance and every other situation. We exalt him above everything that's going on around us. Everything fades away. Come on now, let all the other names fade away until there's only you, sickness and disease, depression, anxiety. Let all the other names fade away until there's only you. Oh, come on. Hopelessness and fear. We speak against it today because all those names fade away until there's only you, until our focus is on you and on nothing else. We're not worried about anything else. We're not worried about what man can do to us. We're not worried about what's going on around us because there's only you, our God, our God. God, we lift you high, our God. There's no God like our God in all of the earth. And we just give God praise on and we are so glad, Lord, that you have called us, Lord, that you have put your name on us, that you have placed your love upon us, Lord, that you watch out for us and you keep us, you sustain us. We thank you for the angels of the Lord that are encamped all around us, that protect us, that watch over our homes at night, that watch over our children. We thank you, God, for who you are to us and Lord, that you are faithful. Lord, you don't change. You remain the same. And we say thank you for that. Thank you that we can trust you. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, Lord, with our very life, with everything that concerns us, because you care about the things that concern us. So we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of your many blessings. Lord, we don't have enough time to tell it all about just how good you have been. We don't have enough tongues to tell it all how good you have been. Thank you, Lord, with the one mouth that we have and the one tongue that we have, we will glorify your name. Oh, God, we bless you this morning and say thank you for yet another time that we can come together. God bless every one of you who was on the broadcast on today. We are so glad that you are here with us. We're so glad that you're able. We're so glad for technology, amen, because we're here in Massachusetts and we are here. There's a snowstorm this thing right now falling but i thank god for uh technology because we're still able to go forth in service we're still able to broadcast the praise and worship we're still able to broadcast the word and i just thank god that there is nothing that can hinder us from going forth i'm so grateful to god for that i'm so grateful that he has made a way he has made a way for us to be able to continue to deliver the gospel message. So I just want you to get excited while you grab your Bibles. We're going to talk a little bit on today. Last week, we talked about 
rising up. We talked about how the man by the pool of Bethesda, how Jesus came and told him, take up his bed and walk. And we talked about the miraculous power that Jesus demonstrated because the man didn't even realize in the whole conversation that he was already healed. All he had to do was obey. I believe from the moment Jesus began to speak to him, his healing showed up. When Jesus asked the question and said, wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? And they had to go through this dialogue where the, the man had to talk about where he had been and what he had been through. I believe that he was already healed at the moment when Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? I just believe that because Jesus followed it up and said, pick up your bed and walk. And in that instant, he picked up his bed and he walked. I believe that that miraculous power was already present and already there at the onset of the conversation. And so on today, we want to follow it up and we want to talk about get up. Last week, we told you to rise up. This week, we want to talk about get up. And I want you to grab your Bibles and I want you to go with me to 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. And we're just going to read a few verses. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. And it says this, and there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And if we shall die, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. I want to just talk today just a little bit about get up. I want, I want to just encourage you to get up from where you are. I was in a conversation on this week, and I was having this conversation with a few young men. They're the ages in their early 20s. I had a conversation with them. I saw their life going. And it was interesting to talk to these young men, 26, 30, um, and they were talking about how hopeless they felt in their career. They were talking about how they felt like they were kind of stuck and that they were just going to be where they are indefinitely, although they were miserable. And they felt like, I'm just going to be here. And th this is all there is. I don't see a way out. I don't see any options. And we were having this conversation and I began to say to them, you know, that, that the only thing that's preventing you from moving forward further or move in direction is how you see this. It's your mindset. It's what you allow yourself to leave. And so we began to have this conversation and I, I felt for a moment, like I said, Lord, I, I may be just saying too much. And I said to them, I said, you know, I'm going to get off my soapbox and leave it alone. And, and they looked at me and they said, no, 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 we need this. We need this. Keep talking to us, keep talking to us. And so as we continue to talk, I just began to encourage them to dream. I began to encourage them to hope. I began to encourage them to those ideas and thoughts that come to their mind. To, I encourage them to begin to write them down, write them down because they're coming to you for a reason. And the only thing that present, prevents you from following the dream or following the vision is how you see yourself and how you see your circumstance. If you don't believe that you're able to make it, if you don't believe that you're smart enough or you don't believe that you have what it takes, Takes, then you'll continue to sit idly in this place and be miserable because you are not being fulfilled. You are not finding yourself moving in a direction that you feel is making you feel the best about yourself. And, and uh, a lot of times you feel like you're just going to die in that circumstance and die in that situation. And we were having this deep conversation. It was a phenomenal conversation. And they were displaying and just talking about their level of dissatisfaction and how they felt like they were failing. And I'm looking at them like you all are some of the smartest young men that I think I have ever met. And they're saying, we feel like we're failing at what we're doing. We feel like we want to we wanna go, but we don't know how to go. We want to move, but we feel like we're at a standstill. And ultimately, they were dealing with the fear of the unknown. If I walk away from what I know, even though I'm not happy with it, what will my end be? How will my life work out? And as I began to think about and contemplate what they were talking about, I began to think about this particular scripture with the four lepers, because the four lepers found themselves sitting at a gate. And they're looking at each other and they're saying, why do we just sit here 
until we die? Why, why are we just going to sit here? Why, what is, what is going to be the thing that we do and how do we move forward? What is this, our reality? That was the conversation I was having with these young men as we were looking at reality. What is our reality? The lepers are sitting here and they find themselves saying, you know, this, this is what it is that we're leprous, we're unclean, we can't be around people, but do we sit right here in this situation until we die? I want to talk to you today because I find that in the midst of what we're going through, we're much, we're living much like how these lepers are living, we're living because we are living in a pandemic which has isolated us and they were living in a famine. They're living in a pandemic, but within the pandemic, they themselves had some issues and some problems that needed to be dealt with. Because I'm a leper sitting in the middle of a famine. If I didn't have leprosy, I could go where other people are. I could be around other people and I could find food with other people. But because I'm a leper, I'm left alone I'm myself with these other lepers. I have to abide with the people who are just like I am. And in the midst of this, this pandemic and being isolated and being alone, I still believe, as I have said from the beginning of this pandemic, that God is bringing us to a place of being alone so that he can talk to us about us. I believe that God has brought us to a place where he can get our attention because there are things that need to be addressed that we've been unable to address because we've been living life and we're running and we're going and we're working and we're, we're doing all these things. Well, everything has come to a standstill now. There's a famine in the land. There's a pandemic in the land and everything is at a standstill. But why sit here until we die? Why allow ourselves to continue to suffer with what we've been going through in the midst of this pandemic when God has brought us to a place where our reality is in front of us. Come on, church. Our Who we are is in front of us. We're alone with ourselves more than we have ever been, if we would tell the truth. It's been almost a year, and we are by ourselves, isolating with our core families. And if you're single, you're isolating by yourself. So why sit here in this reality until we die? Why continue suffering through these different things in these different areas in our life that we have never addressed prior to now? Why sit we here until we die? This is our reality. And it brings about a decision for us, right? Because here the lepers begin to say, if we say we'll enter into the city, the famine is in the city and we'll die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. So let's make a decision, right? We're going to die either way. We can go into the city where the famine is and hope that we're able to stay there. Or we could just continue to sit here in this place and not make a move. And absolutely, death is imminent. The question becomes, while you are faced with this pandemic and you are by yourself and you are alone, the decision that you are going to make about your life, about your circumstance, about where you're going and what you're doing. It may not always be like this, but what will the outcome be for you once we come out of this? What will you have done and what decisions will you have made while we were here? Some people may say, Pastor, I, I don't really understand what you're talking about. I, I, don't, I don't really get it. Well, you know what? I know a group of people who are pursuing degrees in the middle of a pandemic. I know a group of people who are launching businesses in the middle of a pandemic. I know people who are just have given up in the middle of this pandemic. They're overwhelmed, they're depressed, they're going through anxiety, they're struggling because they've been alone too long. What are you going to do in the middle of this circumstance, right? They said, if we say we're gonna go into the city, the famine's there and we'll die there. If we say we're going to sit here, we're going to die. So then they made this decision. They said, okay, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If perchance they keep us alive, we'll live. And if they kill us, we'll die. But let's make a decision not to just sit still in the circumstance that we're in. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm talking to you. I want, I, want to, I want to talk about this because they, there is an opportunity here to do something different 
in the midst of what seems like a negative situation. These were lepers. These were lepers. And, and these lepers, they had a disease that kept them from being in the general population. They had a disease that was hereditary. They had a disease that was contagious. That they, they had a disease that had the potential to constantly increase, meaning it could spread all over their body. It was incurable except for by the power of God. Now I want to talk about that for a minute because what is it that you find yourself dealing with? It is it something hereditary. Are you fighting off things that come down to you through the bloodline from your family? Is this what you're faced with in the midst of this pandemic? What, are you faced with something that is contagious? That when you get around people, it flows off onto them. So people can't be around you because of pain, your negativity. Come on now, let's talk about it. Your drama, your chaos. Is it something that is contagious and then you're putting it off on other people? It Leprosy increases, right? So what are the things that if we're alone, do we find that we're increasing in the negativity? We're increasing in the sorrow. We're increasing in the depression. We're increasing in our anxiety. Or are we increasing in praise? What are we increasing in? Because again, leprosy, is hereditary, it's contagious, it tends to increase. Most importantly, leprosy was only curable by the power of God. You think about in scripture, every time you hear about leprosy, if someone was healed, it was only because God did it. Is what you're facing right now something that can only be cured by God? Is this why God has allowed you to be by yourself? alone in his presence because he wants to cure you of the thing that can only be cured by God. Leprosy brought about shame and disgrace and how much, how many things are we, have we gone through or, or are we walking through that we feel a level of shame and feel like the disgrace is on our life because of where we've been through. And leprosy always rendered the person alone in the world. You feel like you're isolated. You feel like nobody understands. Nobody gets where I've been and what I've been through. Nobody understands what's going on in my life and in my heart. And I know there are some people that say, you know what, Pastor, but it's not that. It's not always that. It's not always that somebody's going through. We all have our cross to bear. And I believe that in the middle of this pandemic, God has isolated us to talk to us about us to talk to us about where we are. You may say, I haven't gone through anything. I've had a great life and everything has been wonderful, but I challenge you in this thing. But have you been faithful to God? Have you been as close to God as God wants to be close to you? Have you given as much of yourself to him as he has asked you for? Come on now, come on, because he calls us, he woos us. He wants to, de he desires to have a relationship with us and fellowship with us. So you may not be suffering from anything, but during this pandemic, have you spent all your time on the phone gossiping? Have you spent all your time on the phone running people down? Or have you found yourself alone with God, getting closer to him, getting to know him? So you may not be going through anything. You may not be suffering through anything. Your past may be clean, honey. You may have lived a wonderful life, but have you been as close to God as he desires to be to you in the midst of everything that's going on? I believe that God is seeking and desiring this relationship with us. I believe that God is desiring to bring us in closer. He's desiring so many things during this pandemic to purify us, to purify the church, to cleanse the church and in a way that only he can do it. And so he brings us to a place where we are by ourselves, where we are like these lepers, where we can either sit in our situation and we can die in our situation and we can remain the same in our situation. We can make a decision, a decision to move in closer to him, to get up from where we are and to move further and closer into our relationship with him, to see the healing that God has promised you, to see the deliverance that God has promised you, to see the breakthrough that he desires to give you, to have the relationship with him that he desires to have with you. 
leprosy was designed and, and had the ability to separate the soul from God and produce spiritual death. Why? Because it was an uncleanness. It was an uncleanness. They were unclean. Think about this. They had to go around saying unclean when they entered into any place where other people were. They were unclean. What has attached itself to you that has separated you from God, that is producing a level of spiritual death, a lack of discipline in the word, a lack of discipline in your walk with Christ? Come on now. These things that have attached themselves to us, the hurts and the pains and the sorrow that we carry, the brokenness that we carry, the things that we refuse to give over to God that he's saying, if you just give it to me, I can handle it. I can take care of you. I want you to think about this. We talked about this a little bit on last week. Psalms 103 and 13 tells us that like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. What does that say? He has compassion on us. It is not his desire that you suffer. It's not his desire that you feel broken. It's not his desire that you feel all alone and that you're thrown and cast aside. It's not his desire that you carry the burdens from your childhood into your adulthood. It's not, that's not his desire. It is not his desire that you have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof, that you barely relationship with him only in name. Come on now, that you say, I, I'm a Christian only in name, but my relationship with him is lacking. It is not his desire. And he has compassion on us so much that he'll shut the whole world down with a pandemic. He'll allow a pandemic to happen to get our attention. He'll allow a circumstance to occur that forces us to make a decision, that forces us to have to get up. The, the, these, these four lepers, they said, why are we gonna just continue to sit here? Why, why are we just gonna go through this and never move? I asked that question of you on today. Why continue to feel those feelings and suffer through those emotions and all of those things and never move? Never dare to take the time to step outside of your circumstance. Come on, they could have been comfortable in where they were. They could have just sat there recognizing we're going to die anyway. We're leprous. We're going to die. If we go in the city, they're going to kill us. So why even bother to try? They had nothing to lose, but they had everything to gain by stepping into the unknown. For some of us, it is the unknown. The unknown is how to be free from the things that have attached themselves to us all these years, how to be free from hurts and pains that we've not been able to talk to anybody about. How to be free, come on now, but let's keep talking about this. How to be free from self-righteousness, feeling like, well, I haven't gone through anything, I'm good, but yet we are very far in our relationship away from God. Come on, how to be free from a level of pride that says, I'm all right and I have need of nothing. But we don't know, like Revelation says, that we're blind and we're deaf. We don't hear from God. We don't see God. We don't know God, but we say we have need of nothing because we have more financially or more economically than we've ever had, but we have less of God. How do we step into this unknown, this place? Come on, this place that we've gotten so far away from. You know, we've gotten away from the church talking about sanctification and holiness, and we've gotten away from church talking about the need and the necessity to, to pray like never before, to live a life that is pleasing to God like never before. So do we just continue to sit in this circumstance and never step out of it? Do we continue to feel as though we don't have anything more that we can gain? that I'm fine just the way that I am. I'm fine doing what I'm doing. I'm fine in my circumstance. Don't bother me, I'm good. But in the midst of this pandemic, I believe the Lord is trying to get your attention and my attention. He's calling us to come in closer than where we have been. And like these lepers, we have a decision to make. I think about this in this passage because what ends up happening is they make the decision. They make this decision. I'm going to get up. I'm not going to remain where I am. I'm not going to stay in the place that I'm in. 
I'm going to believe that I have more to gain than I have to lose. Come on now, that what I'm doing right now, I, I can move beyond that. I can go past that. There is something more that is out there for me. I believe this, that they had to exhibit a level of to believe that something good could happen. Even though the famine is all around me, even though the famine is everywhere, there's something possible in my getting up that I could receive. Just perchance I make this move, perchance I trust God, perchance I go forward, there's something that God may have for me. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 tells us this. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's talking to the disciples because they don't have the capacity or they didn't have the ability to help this young man get free. A father brought their, his son to them and said, my son is a lunatic and he does all these things. And he, and he goes to Jesus and he says, I took him to the disciples and the disciples couldn't heal him. I took him to your disciples and they couldn't do anything, but I'm bringing him to you that if perchance maybe you can help my son. And Jesus says this statement in Matthew 17, 20, he says, for verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. What am I saying to you? These leprous men had to have a small grain of faith that would say, we'll at least get up and try. What am I saying to you on today? Get up and try. Get up and make a decision that I don't want to be in this place any longer. I don't have to be by, uh, uh, bound by anything any longer. I don't have to succumb to all of these emotions that overtake me any longer. And Lord, I may not have this running towards you, but Lord, with my mustard seed faith, with this little tiny granule of faith, this small amount of faith that I can muster up, Lord, I'm willing to get up and come towards you and hand it all over to you. I'm willing to give you everything that I have carried, the burdens that I have carried, the pain that I have carried, the life that I have carried. Come on now, the wondering that I have carried, the, the, the not knowing that I have carried. Come on now, we've gone through some things and, and the, the uncertainties that I have carried, the fear that I have carried. I know I'm talking to somebody on this morning, the grief that I've been carrying. The chin, the anxiety that I have been carrying. Lord, I'm willing to bring it and give it to you. I will get up from where I am and hand it over to you because I've got to be able to gain more than what I could possibly lose. Chance, Lord, you are able to deliver me and set me free. I'm willing to get up from my situation and make a decision that I don't want this any longer. I'm willing to move forward. I'm willing to take a step. I'm willing to go into the unknown. I'm willing to believe in you in a way that I have not tried you before. Lord, in the middle of this pandemic, while I'm here by myself, I'm willing to hand it all over to you. And Lord, I don't know what that looks like and I don't know what that may mean for my life, but I'm willing to hand it over to you. Why should I sit here until I die. Why should I carry this around with me until I die? Why be burdened with this any longer until I die? That is the challenge. So we have to get up from our situation. Last week I told you to rise up. This week I'm telling you, get up, get up and live. Get up and live. Lamentations chapter three, verse 21 to 23 says this. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We have an opportunity every day that we are among the land of the living to see a new mercy from God. We're having this opportunity, even in the midst of a pandemic, to be able 
to see God's grace and his compassion towards us. Because my friends, he is concerned about you. He is concerned about your circumstance. He is concerned about where you are and how you are faring right now. He's concerned about that. He has compassion towards us, great compassion. We're going to continue talking about this story on, in Bible study. We're going to stay in 2 Kings chapter 7. But I want you to see right here that at twilight, these men got up to go into the camp of the, the Syrians. They made a move. They got up from their situation and they made a decision to walk into the camp of the, of the Syrians. They didn't know what to expect when they got there. They didn't know what would happen to them. But anything has got to be better than just sitting here waiting to die. I say that to you on today. Anything has got to be better than holding on to the things of the past, the demons of your past, the struggles of your past. Anything has got to be better than holding on to that. Get up and move forward. Get up with a mustard seed, a grain of your faith and try God and trust him. Because what I understand is this, we can be believers. We can be believers, but I love the fact that God is constantly revealing himself to us in new ways. He's constantly revealing himself to us as we need him. So when you need a healer, the healer shows up. When you need a deliverer, the deliverer shows up. Come on. When you need a way maker, the way maker shows up. When you need a provider, the provider shows up. And in this pandemic, he desires to show up for you and show up in your circumstance. These lepers were in the midst of a famine in the land, but they were lepers sitting in this famine. Whatever you're going through is what you're going through in the middle of this pandemic. And yet and still, God gave them the wherewithal to get up and to move forward. And I believe if you haven't read this story, it's going to bless you what they ended, what ended up happening to their life when they made the decision to get up. When they faced their reality, made a decision, and then got up. They got up from where they were. They made a decision. So I challenge you on today. I encourage you on today. Don't sit in the middle of what you've been through and die there. Because yes, honey, you'll be a believer sitting in church and you can very well die in your circumstance. Why? Because that's the part of your life you chose not to give to God. So you come to church and you stay burdened down. You come to church and you stay uh, in pain and hurt and wounded. You stay broken in, in certain areas. And it doesn't mean that you don't love the Lord. It just means that's the area I haven't given over to God. So now I'm crippled in the house of God. I'm broken in the house of God. I'm lame in the house of God. Come on now. I'm walking around in the house of God blinded, unable to really see. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Having the form of it, but never really grabbing a hold to the power that is in God. The power that is in the name that you were called by. The power of the one that saved you and raised you from where you were. Brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light. The power of the word of God that has the ability to break yokes and shackles off of your life. This is that moment in time. This is, I believe, a Kairos moment for the body of Christ that God is calling us to come back closer to him. We veered off. We veered off church. The church, we veered off. We, we, we've become commercial. We've, we've done all these things that have changed the gospel. And we've, we've, we've watered things down. And where we used to want to be delivered, now we learn how to just live with sin. And we live with rebellion. And we live with disobedience to God. And I believe that God is grieved by this and is giving us an opportunity in the middle of this pandemic, he's saying, I need these lepers to get up, get up from where you are, get up. And as you get up and go, you'll be delivered. As you get up and you move forward, you'll be set free. As you get up 
you'll come to understand that I'm moving behind the scenes in ways that you don't even know about. But I need you to get up. I need you to activate your faith. See, because they activated their faith when they got when they got up from where they were, where they could have died, they got up and made a decision. I'm going to go forward and I don't know what's ahead of me. When you activate your faith, God to move in your life. Faith moves God. Faith moves God. And when I sit in my circumstance and will not move, then what I'm saying is I don't have the faith enough to believe challenge you a mustard seed of faith a grain of faith get up and what i love about this when the lord was talking to me about this like lord you say move and we're saying get up and go and it's not a physical getting up church it is a spiritual and a mental getting up because see they had to think about this and make a decision in their mind First, their mind had to tell them, we need to decide what we're going to do. Then in their mind, they had to make a decision worth getting up long before they physically made the move. It had to happen internally. And so I say to you that what God wants to do is an internal work in your life. What God wants to do is something that can own in the unseen realm, where he wants to go in and cut away the things that are unusable and the things that have tied you up and held you down. Those things that have prevented you from moving forward and prevented you from being a whole person. And all of this happens on the inside. And then what you'll find is once it happens on the inside, the outer man will be able to get up forward in life. It'll be able to move forward in the things of God and the promises of God and what God has for you. Once your mind has changed about your circumstance. So I challenge you on today to get up. If you're watching us and you're here with us for this broadcast and, and you're here, I challenge you to get up from where you are. I challenge you to make a decision to get up in your mind. I speak to your pure mind that you get up from where you are because God has so much more for you. God has something for you that you will never be able to attain if you sit in the midst of your circumstance. Yes, things have been hard. Yes, there's been some struggles. You're believing for your children to be saved. You're believing God to bring you out of so many things. But you know what? First, it starts in your mind. Get up and believe that God is able. Get up and believe that God can handle whatever your circumstance is. He's able to bring you out of it. So if you're here and you're watching this broadcast on today and you say, I don't know who this Jesus is talking about. I don't know who this Lord is that's able to bring me out of what I've been going through. I don't know who that is. Then I want to introduce you to him on today. I want to introduce you to him and I want to invite you into the family of believers. I want to invite you to come in and become a part of the body of Christ. So I want to offer Christ to you and I, I want you to pray with me on today. I want you to just open up your heart right now. And I want you to open your mouth and repeat this after me. Father, in need of a savior, I ask you to come into my life. You died and you rose again on the third day and that you are coming back to receive the church. Lord, I ask save me. Heal me, deliver me. I want to know what it is to be able to get up from where I am right now. I want to know what it feels like to be able to move forward in life and not be stuck. And I heard that you're able to do that for me. So I surrender my life to you on today and ask you to be Lord of my life forever. I thank you for saving me. Now, if you prayed that prayer with us on today, 
I want to encourage you, as I always do, to do this. I want you to reach out to a local church, out to this church, and I want you to say, you know what? I gave on February 7th. I'm asking you to teach me what it means to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I also want to know, when the doors open, can I be baptized? Can I know what it is to go down in the water and take the old man down and come up a new man? Be buried like Jesus Christ was and become a new creation. To align yourself with good Bible-believing Bible study. I want you to align yourself with somewhere or someone that is going to teach you the scriptures and show you who Jesus is. And then I want you to live your life free from everything that has plagued you and followed you and tied you up and held you down. Because Jesus is able to set you free. He's able to like these leprous men, he's able to help you to have the faith to get up and to walk into your deliverance. Come back again and join us on Wednesday as we're going to continue to talk about these leprous men. We're going to continue to discuss what happens when they get up and they make a move. What happens when they dare to go into the unknown, just like you did on today? making a decision for Jesus Christ, which may be foreign to you and may be unknown to you. But I wanna show you what happens when they make this move and what a blessing it was that that one move changed the course of their lives. God bless you until we meet again on Wednesday for Bible study. You, you, I want you to be safe. I want you to stay safe. Whatever you do, stay safe. Follow the laws of the land and stay safe. Make sure you follow all the protocols and be safe, church. God bless you until we meet again. Have a wonderful Sunday.